Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Let's Play Forge. Last couple of times we have been uh, defeated by our opponent, although last time we came quite close to defeating them. It just wasn't an easy thing to do. So right now we're not winning at all. I will travel again to a world that's a bit easier for us and I don't remember which world we had that was really easy. Let's go back to Homelands. I feel like we haven't been there for quite some time. So let's play on Homelands. Uh, yeah, let's try to do that. Let's play with a random opponent and let's start. We won the coin toss, so we get to, to decide whether we we play we go first or second. I'll go first as usual. And this is a decent enough starting hand. I will keep it because I we have a lot of forest cards, which make me happy. Now he summons, uh, we're playing against Autumn Willow, and he summons a Willow Fairy, which is a 1 slash 2 fairy creature which has flying. Okay. Now he attacks us with his Willow Fairy and does 1 damage to us. And now he summons a Fairy Noble, which is a 1 slash 2 noble creature which also has flying, and which has the effect of all fairies you control get plus 0 plus 1. And for tapping, all fairies you control get plus one plus zero until the end of turn. Okay. Now we do not have any creatures just yet, we just have a lot of mana, which is quite annoying, but you know, whatever. And now he attacks me with both his fairy noble and his willow fairy. And now he summons a Willow Priestess, which is a 2 slash 2 fairy creature, which has the effects of for tapping it take a fairy a fairy from your hand and put it directly into play as though it were just summon and for paying one green mana and two other mana target green creature gains protection from black until end of turns I, for I forgot what protection from black even means let's summon an elite cat creature which is a 2 slash 3 creature which has forest walk which means if defending player has any forests in play which, it ha which he has, autumn willow has forests on his side of the field then elite cat creature can be intercepted. For its are in play regardless of whether they're tapped or untapped. That's cool. And let's also cast Ambuscade, which is an instant which has the effect of target creature you control gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature and opponent controls. That's interesting. Let's dis use this to uh, use his elite cat warrior to destroy his fairy noble. Oh, but I don't have the mana yet. Okay, never mind. We won't do anything just yet then. Now he ca he casts a roots, which is an enchant creature card, which has the effect of tar tap target creature without play without flying, and that creature does not untap during its uh, controller's untap phase so he fucked me with my uh, he fucked my elite cat warrior and now I cannot use it at all which is quite sad but I can still cast ambuscade on his fairy noble or my willow or his willow fairy or his willow priestess I'll use it on his willow fairy honestly just to destroy it so his Willow Fairy has been destroyed. Now what else can we do? We do not have the mana for anything else, so we might as well just uh, not do anything anymore. He keeps on attacking me with his things, and now he casts a Serrated Arrows, which is an artifact card, which has the effect of when Serrated Arrows comes into play, put three arrowhead counters on it. During your upkeep, uh, bury serrated arrows if there are no arrowhead counters on it, and uh, remove an arrowhead counter from uh, serrated arrows to put a minus one minus one counter on target creature. So he uses that to put a minus one minus one counter on my elite cat warrior, which quite sucks. Let's summon a panther warriors, which is a six left free creature. Just to have it on our side of the field. Now he uses his serrated arrows to do 
uh, to put the minus one minus one counter on my Panther Warriors, and now he attacks me with both of his uh, creatures. I will block his uh, wi Willow Priestess with my Panther Warriors, though, to completely destroy it. And now he summons another Fairy Noble, which is quite annoying. Let's summon a Bitter Blade Warrior, which is a 2 slash 2 Jackal Warrior creature, which has the effect of you make the Bitter Blade Warrior as it attacks. When you do, it gets plus 1, plus 0, and, and gains Death Touch until the end of turn. Uh, exertion means that an exerted creature won't untap during your next untap step. Yeah, that this should be sufficient. Now he uses his Irrated Arrows to put a minus 1, minus 1 counter on my Bitter Blade Warrior. And now he attacks me with everything he has, and I really don't have the means to block him because I'm so weak. Now he summons a Roteto Ro Topter, which is a 0 slash 2 artifact creature which has flying, and for paying 2 mana plus, plus 1 plus 0 until the end of turn, you cannot spend more than 4 mana in this way each turn, which is quite sad. Where are all my mana cards though? Where are all my forest cards? I know I had some forest cards. Let's put a Shed Weakness on my Bitter Blade Warrior. Sh sh shed Weakness is an instant which does g target creature gets plus 2 plus 2 until the end of turn. You may remove a minus 1 minus 1 counter on it. So let's use this on the on it. We, and also to remove the minus 1 minus 1 counter on it. And now let's also use an Ambuscade which has the effect of target creature you control gets plus 1 plus 0 until the end of turn. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature and opponent controls. So let's do that. To destroy his spectral bears. And now let's uh, end our turn. He summons a second Roteto Copter. Ro Roteto Raptor. Oh shit. And now he keeps on attacking me. So that was annoying. Uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what else to do right now. I can't just uh, I can't block any of his creatures because none none of my creatures have flying nor uh, reach. So I'm kind of screwed. Finally, we get a forest car, but this is too little, too late, and we cannot do anything about it. I can just uh, attack him with my bitter blade warrior, but this won't do me much good anyway at this point. So I kind of lost this game because my my forest cards came so goddamn late in the game that it didn't really matter anymore. That was quite terrible, and this is a terrible starting hand as well. So I am mulligan. This is a bit better. Yeah, let's remove riding the deal horse and now uh, yeah, I will keep this hand. This is a decent hand. Let's summon a Feral Prowler, which is a 1 slash 3 cat creature, which has the effect of when Feral Prowler dies, draw a card. He uses his mana to summon a Spectral Bears, which has the effect of uh, which is a 3 slash 3 bears creature, which has the effect of if Spectral Bears is declared as an attacker and if any player controls no black cards, it does not untap during your next untap phase. Okay, that's convenient for me. Let's just attack him with everything that we've got. Alpha Strike. He will block me with his Spectral Bears as he is expected. And normally my Feral Prowler would die from this battle because it one has free toughness whereas his Spectral Bears has free power. So that's enough to kill my Feral Prowler. And his Spectral Bears would survive because he has free toughness and my Feral Prowler has only one power. So not enough to kill it. But I can cast Stun Shed Weakness right now to boost my Feral Prowler's power because what sh Shed Weakness does is target creature gets plus 2 plus 2 until the end of turn you may remove a minus 1 minus 1 counter from it so plus 2 plus 2 means my de means that my Feral Prowler would get up to 3 slash 5 and that with free attack it would be strong enough to destroy his Spectral Bears which has only free toughness 
And I can cast it right now because it's an instant, so you can basically cast this whenever you want, as long as you have the mana to play it. So let's do that. We destroyed his card. Now he summons an Anhava Constable, which is a 2 slash 1 uh, Constable creature, which has the effect of Anhava Constable has toughness equal to 1 plus the total number of green creatures in play. So that's annoying because I only have green creatures in my play. So that really fucking sucks. Let's uh, summon a giant uh, spider right now, which is a 2 slash 4 spider creature which has reach. Which means that this creature can block creatures with flying. And now let's uh, attack him with our Feral Prowler. He will block me with, with, with his Anhava Constable though. So that was expected. Now he summons a Fairy, fairy Novel. Let's uh, use uh, our Nambuscade on our uh, Feral Prowler to do damage to his Fairy Novel though. And now let's just alpha strike him with everything we have so that we, we still do damage to him somehow. Now he attacks us back with his with his Anhava Constable though and he summons a second Anhava Constable. Let's summon another giant spider though and let's keep on attacking him with everything that we've got. Summons another Spectral Bears though which is annoying. And a Will Willow Fairy and a Rotatoraptor, okay. Let's end our turn for now. He summons another Willow Fairy, and now let he summons a Riding the Deal Horse, which I will, which means that any one creature gets plus two plus two and gains horsemanship, which means that it becomes unblockable. But I don't know if I want to use any of this to my advantage just yet. So let's just end our turn for now. He casts roots on. Uh, one of my creatures, ah, it's a, one of my giant spiders, of course. Let's uh, summon a skill behemoth, which is a 6 slash 7 crocodile creature, which is hexproof, which means that this creature can be the target of spells or abilities your opponent controls. That makes sense. Let's end our turn. Now he casts a Hungry Mist, which is a 6 slash 2 mist creature, which has the effect of during your upkeep, play, pay 2 green mana or bury Hungry Mist. Okay, let's... Uh, let's cast Cartouche of Strength on our scale Behemoth, which has the effect of enchant creature we control. When Cartouche of Strength enters the battlefield, you may have enchanted creature fight target creature on opponent controls. Each deals damage equal to its power to the other. An enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and, and has trample. So let's use that to destroy his Hungry Mist for now. That seems to make sense to me. And now that's it for now. He casts a serrated arrows though, which he weakens one of my giant spiders, but that's fine. I will cast an ambuscade on my skill behemoth to have it destroy uh, one of his creatures, specifically his spectral bears. Oh wait, should it be his spectral bears? I don't know if it should. What Ambuscade does is that target creature you control gets plus 1 plus 0 until the end of turn and it deals damage equal to its power to target creature and opponent controls. You know what, that sounds good enough. Let's cast this on our skill behemoth to destroy his uh, spectral bears. And now my skill behemoth is up to 8 slash 8. Let's cast another shade. Let's cast a shade, a shed weakness on it to have it get plus two plus two until the end of turn as well. And now let's cast riding the deal horse on it so that it gets plus two plus two once again and gains horsemanship, which basically means that uh, that uh, it will uh, uh, horsemanship means that it won't it won't be blocked by any of my opponent's creature, which don't. It becomes unblockable to all, 
any of my opponent's creatures which don't have horsemanship as well. And because none of my opponent's creatures has a horsemanship, that means that it, it's unblockable for all of them. None of them can block it. So let's cast right in the deal of horse and my skill behemoth and let's just have it uh, uh, attack him full force. So now he's down to 5 life. Which kind of sucks. Now he summons an Ebony Rhino, which is a force left 5 creature which has trample on it. Let's summon a uh, Sifter Worm, which is a 7 slash 7 worm creature which has trample. And with the effect of when Sifter Worm enters the battlefield, scry free, then reveal the top card of your library. You gain life equal to that card's converted mana cost. Sure, why not? Let's summon it, and I don't need any more forest cards, I think I'll just go with a Panther Warrior, sure. Let's end our turn for now. He cats another Serrated Arrows to fuck with me, and he summons another Fairy Noble, but that won't do him much good. Let's cast the Panther Warriors. Now, and let's just alpha strike him with everything except our giant spider, because giant spider has uh, zero power right now. Now, he will block me with everything he has. He blocks, uh, he, b he is blocking my out, wait, he is blocking uh, my feral prowler with two willow fairies and a fairy noble. Let's remove his Fairy Noble first. And he's also blocking my Sifter Worm with his Rotero Topter, uh, two Unhava Constables, and one in Eb Ebony Rhino. So let's prioritize the weaker creatures first. Let's prioritize his Ebony Rhino first, then his Rotero Topter, and then everything else. So first things first, his Ebony Rhino gets completely destroyed, as expected, so let's uh, transfer the damage to his Rotero Topter then. And we completely won against him, so that was quite nice. Okay, final match, let's do this properly. He summons the Spectral Bears, that's fine. We can, we can deal with that for now. He will attack us with his Spectral Bears. Now he summons a Fairy Noble as well. Which is quite unfortunate. We cannot do anything because we don't have the mana just yet. So let's just move on. He summons a Willow Priestess as well. Let's summon a Giant Spider. To be able to defend ourselves against him. Now he will uh, tap his Willow Priestess to, to summon a fairy from his hand. And he also summon an Han Hava Constable. Which kind of makes sense given the circumstances, but okay. Okay, let's think about this properly. Now, what do we want to do? Let's summon another giant spider to... And f to... Uh, strengthen our defenses. He summons a serrated arrows though to start uh, weakening my defenses, which is quite annoying true for him, but whatever. Now let's... Um, what do we want to do? Let's cast an ambuscade on one of our giant spider to destroy one of his fairy nobles. To weaken his own creatures. Yeah, that makes sense for now. Now he uses a serrated arrow to put a minus one minus one counter on my other giant spider as well. He attacks me with his spectral bears to do free damage to me. Now I can block him with my giant spiders, but uh, is that a good idea? Yes, it is. I will block. Wait. Why can't I block him?
Ah, uh, now I can block him. So I will block him with my giant spiders and I will also cast a shield weakness on my giant spiders. To be able to deflect his, uh, his attack and destroy his own creature, which was quite nice. I need another forest card to unleash all my power, which I do not have at this point, which is quite sad. Uh, yeah, let's end our turn for now. He puts another minus one minus one counter on my other giant spider and now he's attacking me with his uh, willow priestess. I will block it with my giant spider and now I will cast shared weakness again on my giant spider. And to destroy his creature and now he summons a hungry mist which is quite annoying. But now that I have the mana necessary I can also start summoning some good stuff as well. So let's summon a 4 elemental, which is a 7 slash 7 elemental creature, which has the effect of you may have 4 elemental deal combat damage to defending player as though it weren't blocked, which is quite a nice effect, honestly. His serrated arrows dies. He has to pay 2 mana to maintain his hungry mist. Now let's summon a sifter worm. And now with Sifter Worm, yeah, this is fine. I will leave this at it, as it is. We get healed just a tiny little bit. Can we cast Riding the Deal Horse? No, we do not have enough mana for that just yet, so this is fine. Now let's just attack him with our uh, with our Forn Elemental. He will block me with bo both his Unhava Constable and with uh, Hungry Mist. So now we'll prioritize Hungry Mist for now. I think this is acceptable. Do you want to assign his combat damage as though it weren't blocked? Yes, because Forney Elemental has the effect of you may have Forney Elemental deal its combat damage to defending player as though it weren't blocked. I will use this effect to do 7 damage directly to the player. Although this will... Actually, no, I will not because I want to kill, start killing his creatures. Actually, you know what? No, I will, I, I will do damage directly to him. I think that's an acceptable compromise. He summons another Willow Fairy. I will summon a, a Sheffer Monitor for myself. And now let's just attack him with our Sifter Worm. He will block me with everything he has though. Let's uh, let's destroy his hungry, hungry mist first, which will die from the encounter. There we go. He summons a second hungry mist, though. Yeah, let's just cast riding the deal of horse on our ship and monitor to increase to give it horsemanship and plus two plus two. And now with this, we can have it attack him directly. We depleted his life to 5. Yeah, and now let's just alpha strike him with everything that we have. He will try to block us with a lot of stuff, but we will, for the most part, survive. Yeah, and we won. Finally, we won uh, one match. It was about time that we did. We did do that. Anyways, that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to get in touch with me, I have a Mastodon account as well as a Matrix room that you can join. Details of which you can find in the description of this video. And in the meantime, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.